Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another Tech House video. Today, I'm going to be showing you my customized setup of my Android 4.4.3, yes, 4.4.3, on my Google Nexus 7 2013 edition. So as you can see here, I got Action Launcher as my launcher, which is a pretty nice launcher. I actually had the paid version before they switched to be having a free version too. And one of the first things you notice is this really nice font. So this is system-wide. I replied, applied the Roboto Thin font system-wide, which makes it really nice looking. So here's all my apps. And then you can see I have the icons down here, which basically is Chrome, Google+, Plus, which is a folder, but you can, you can swipe down on it to view everything else, Google+, Plus and Hangouts. I have... The Google Play folder, which has the Play Store, Google Play Music, Google Play Games, Google Play Newsstand, and YouTube. I have my fitness tracking app, my fitness pal, and Spotify, and the Google Camera, which I love. And then, one of the other things you'll notice is if I go into the settings, I'm going into the system settings, you'll notice, boom, I got a white settings. And also that Roboto Thin font. And this is because I have the Expose Framework installed. And that's also how I'm recording this. So, if I go down down a little farther, you see my Expose Modules section. So, here I have, here's all the Expose Modules I have. I have Activity Force New Task. That one ain't that important, but basically what it does is fix a really annoying bug where, say you're in Chrome, and you open, an, and you open, like Google Plus or something, it'll actually. Here's a better example. You're in Chrome and you open a Play Store link. It takes you to the Play Store, but when you open your recent tray, you can't get back to Chrome because it it still says you're in Chrome even though you're in the Play Store. Extra is kind of interesting. Basically, it's just it just allows you to access the old version of Easter eggs. So basically, so right now I have the ICS Easter egg. And also, you saw that pie there. I'll get to that in a second. But see, now if I go to About Tablet, and yes, you see I am running 4.4.3, so this is KitKat. But if I tap repeatedly on the version number, I have the good old ICS9 Droid Easter egg. And it even works with Immersive Mode. Also, I'm running Franco Kernel on it. And normally, since... 4.4.3 drivers are not out yet for the kernel sources and stuff. It would the Wi-Fi would stop working if you install Franco kernel or other custom kernels. I have the deprimator zip file installed, which restored the old Prima drivers, so, so I can still use Franco kernel with the new thing. But back to the exposed modules. I also have Google Play Listen later, which basically just allows you to set default tabs that you want to use, so by default, Google Play opens into the Listen Now mode, but however, I don't use Listen Now, however, I use the My Library, and, go, and also I go straight to my songs list instead of the artist in my library, so it automatically jumps to where I need. Then I have Google Offline Voice, which basically just allows apps to say, well, if you're offline, automatically use Offline Voice mode instead of Online Voice mode. By default, Google does not allow apps to specify if they want offline mode, so this allows you to do that, which is handy on a tablet. And then, of course, I'll skip GravityVox for now, because you may already know what it is. But basically, it's what allows this pie and almost everything on here, because it's basically an all-in-one toolbox that has everything you can possibly think of. Hollow Themer. Now, this is really interesting. So basically, this is what's a allowing me to change the colors of the apps to hollow light or hollow dark or hollow dark with action more. So say I want to switch the settings app to to hollow back to what the default. So I, so I just click default and then now if I close out the settings app and open up settings back again See, now it's back to the default sock, and you notice that there's black icons there, which they normally be white. I'll get to that in a second. 
But if now if I oops, if I go back into Hollow Themer, I can click on settings again, and I have all these themes I can choose from. So Hollow Dark, which is basically the default. Hollow Light, Hollow Light with dark action bar. Then there's some no action bar ones and user wallpaper, which is the old gingerbread look with your wallpaper behind it. So it won't work with the Hollow apps. Device default and pure black. So basically, what I can say Hollow Light, and then now if I open settings, you'll see now it's got this nice Hollow Light look. And then if I skip a couple, the X Blast tools. Basically, is what's giving me those black icons. Because in Hollow Themer, you can actually download add on modules that will give you set the different color icons inside the app. But it doesn't theme all the icons. So, what you do is you go into X Blast Tools, you go to Visual Tweaks, and you go to Settings Icon Color. You enable it, and then you change the icon color to black or white or whatever color you want. But I also have a few other things enabled in here. Basically, um, if I find them real quick, I have the notification, contextual notification header, as you've seen up there. I have, like, increase the speed of the notification pull down. I also have the Zep Zenith soft key, so that's these here. Not the pie itself, but the keys on the soft keys. Sounds kind of funny. I don't have peak enabled, but it's a pretty awesome feature, but it doesn't really work well on tablets because it requires proximity sensor and gyroscope, and there is no proximity sensor, so it just goes out the wazoo. Then you got some app launchers, you got gesture anywhere, you got quiet hours, phone tweaks, and stuff. In phone tweaks, I go to identicons, and it'll set a, a, an icon for contacts that don't have an icon so basically it'll set this dot matrix icon or the retro or the contemporary but I chose dot matrix and it'll just create them and then the carrier label you can customize what it is but I don't have that um, volume button tweaks I don't have any of these and the miscellaneous I don't think I have any of these Nope. And then that's basically it for that app. And then skipping back up a couple. Back up or a couple. That's kind of funny. Tinted OK Google for third party launches basically just says it detects if you have a certain launcher, like since I have Action Launcher, or and even the stock launcher that comes on the Nexus 7, because it doesn't come with the Google Now launcher that comes with the Nexus 5. You have to download it separately. It'll allow you to add the OK Google Hot Ward to it without basically downloading a separate launcher or downloading an app like, uh, what was it called? Well, download, the, I'll put the link in the description if I remember, but download another app that will allow you to add an OK Google Hot Ward everywhere. So now if I go to my home screen, I can say, OK Google. Sometimes it takes a few times to get this to work. OK Google. OK Google. OK Google. OK, well, it may not be working because it's using my microphone to record this. And also, I, since I went into the app, it may require a restart. But also, I have tinted status bar. So this app basically allows you to change the status bar and actually the navigation bar too. So if I go in there and turn off Pi for a second, which has this awesome look. Basically, you can change the, the colors of the status bars per app. So if you go into an app per se, like maybe, I don't know, let's go into Charter. So Charter is my TV provider around here. You can basically click all of them. Or just the main one, some of them, and you can choose the color for the nav bar and status bar, and even the icons, or you can auto detect. So now, if I go into Charter, which also this app I did change with the lock thing, but now if I go into Charter, you'll see that it has 
the, the bar changed colors to the bar of the app. And now, actually, if I go back out of it, hold on a second, it's kind of freaking out. Yeah. I think this has something to do with the. Wait, let me just close out charter. But now, if I go back and l let's say, let, let me just set the charter back to the default so you can see what it looks like. So if I change it to default, by default it has a blue bar. So if I change it to the default, and now go into Charter, and reset to Auto Detect, and you won't see it here at first, because it normally doesn't have an action bar at this point. But once it loads up, which it may take a few minutes, probably a bad app to show, because it takes forever to launch, but... And also it forces in the landscape mode, which makes the video wonky. But see, it changed it to a blue bar at the top and bottom because the action bar is blue. Which is pretty sweet. So, now that I got... So now, let me just revert that change real quick. So, hollow light with dark action bar. And close out these apps and go back to expanded so yeah basically those are my exposed modules they're pretty simple and they're pretty nice and like I said the gravity box I may go into in a separate video or something because it's got a whole load of features that it would just take too long to cover but just going through some of my other settings real quick like I said I have action launcher in my sound properties I'm just using all the default stuff, and actually I normally disable touch sounds and screen lock sounds, so I, don't, I just haven't done that yet. I uh, sleep after two minutes, uh, auto-rotate screen, clock daydream, and I also have it set to daydream when docked or charging because I don't have a dock. Also have the font size set to huge, even though you could set to normal or small or large, but I think huge looks pretty nice. And also pulse notification line and stuff. Also got some in location. I I'm only using the battery saving stuff, which basically just means network location, language and input. I'm using the Flexi keyboard. And then backup and reset. Don't have anything really checked. As you see, I'm also using push bullets, so all my notifications get synced to my computer. And then under developer options, I don't really have anything down here. I'm using Dalvik, not R, because I have exposed. And then show touches right at the moment so you can see what I'm doing. The animation scale is 0.5x, although I just realized I could put down 0.25. Because I have exposed an exposed module that enables that. So, so really fast animations. And then just going over a the list of my apps real quick, the ones that impact my setup. So, System Cleaner is actually pretty nice. So this is a fairly new app, but basically what it does is it allows you to move your system app updates into the system. It's like, okay, well there's a few apps that do that, apps to ROM and a few others, but this is the only one I've seen so far that moves the library files or the libs also. And if you don't move the libs, then the app crashes, and Apps to ROM fix that by just not letting you move ones that have updated libs, but well, this one actually moves the libs. So as you can see, I have the Play Store and Play Newsstand that can be updated, and they'll be moved to the system. It says it'll take plus 0.47 or in plus 0.75 megabytes. They'll free up 14.04 megabytes on the data partition. And also, that free number also will work if there's some other free stuff. So for example, when Google Drive updated the few weeks ago and they removed the editing functionality into the separate apps, that, that app size actually went down, so it said it would minus so many megabytes and it was green instead. And that would also be in this food number. So basically you just, you can, and you also can select ones that don't want to be moved. So like say maybe this one's too big for the amount of free space you have, you can just 
move it, not move that one. And then you can buy him a beer, which is pretty funny. But you can store backups so it does make backups for you. And you select the backup folder and then when you're done it shows you this reboot screen. Which basically just lets you wipe the Dalva cache and wipe the application's cache and reboot. And then I also have this awesome calculator which is my script calculator. Which I haven't opened it yet since I switched to but basically it allows you to make ca calculations by handwriting recognition. So I can do cost, let's see, 40... Nine, it'll find the cosine of 49. And since it realizes the trigonometry, it gives me degree and radians. And then you can just like do a whole bunch of advanced stuff. So like you say, equals x, well, let me undo that real quick. You, you don't put x on here, you put question mark instead over like 360 maybe. And they'll figure automatically um, fill in the question mark with the answer. So it's a pretty nice calculator. They have the standard one also. Um, like I said, Charter, that's my local TV provider. Um, device frame generator is actually pretty nice. So it'll let me take screenshots and put a device frame automatically around it. Um, Drive Droid is pretty nice. So basically, it'll set. Say if you have, well, say you have like some Linux or some kind of ISO file that you want to boot from, your, your boot your computer from, you basically just click on it. You set it'll host the image as a partition kind of thing. So you say read only or writable. So writable would basically just mean you have, like, say you create your own image file and you, or you want to, like, maybe you have, like, say you have a Chromebook. You can use the Chromebook image recovery image tool to basically make a make use this to make a four gigabyte like image file ISO file and then basically use the Chrome the Chromebook tool on your computer to make write to it to make a writable U to make a USB recovery image and just store your recovery image is on here so say you have three Chromebooks you have three recovery images on 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 one device instead of three USB sticks or three SD cards. And that same way with Linux ISOs, you don't have to have three USB sticks or constantly have to erase them or have so many CDs. You just click read only USB and it'll save it. And then we got Franco Kernel Updater, the Flexi Keyboard Fonster. So this is actually what I'm using to install the fonts. So basically, if I scroll down here, you see I have Roboto Thin. And Roboto Condense Download. Download it, but I'm using Roboto Thin at the moment. I also have the Gmail, Google Plus, Hangouts, Ift. So I actually, I'm surprisingly pretty popular on Ift. So, so I, I got featured a couple weeks ago for making a recipe for Android Police. So basically I said... If, if Android posts an APK file, then push a link to download. And we'll post a notification, send a notification down. This is actually a no one I tried. But this one, it has over 11,000 people have downloaded it. And I'm currently number 12 as one of the top people at making recipes for it. And that's the only recipe I've made that has gotten a lot of attention. Just boom, everybody's been using it. I've actually made two new versions of it, one using Pushbold and one using Android, using the notifications, and they're both using a new system, but they, and see my popularity graph just been going up and down. I also made a recipe for twit.tv, where basically they have a new show called Android App Arena, so if a new episode comes out, then push a link to Pushbold it. So, yeah, quite a bit of interesting stuff with it. Gotta hurry this video up, it's taking a little too long. So next I got Link Bubble, which is a nice let's see a nice browser that 
loads links in the background and redicts you without taking you to another app. Multi-ROM, which allows me to run multiple ROMs. So even though I'm running stock right now, I can run the Paranoid Android also, or other ROMs. I'm currently running Paranoid Android as a second because I want to test some of their features. I also want to be updated whenever Hybrid comes out. Also, my wallpaper is usually Muzai or whatever, but I changed it to test something, so right now it's one of the Moonshine wallpapers, which is also my icon pack, as you can see down there. Um, all these apps skip. Um, Pocket, that's where I store my news articles. Pushbullet, like I said, mirrors my notifications and also lets me receive stuff from like if automatically. A quick office allows me to view PDF files. I don't really use it for other things. ROM toolbox is like a bucket load of stuff you can do. SD make cleans up your device. Superbeam allows you to send files by NFC or QR code. And Workflow is one of the most awesomest note taking apps. Basically, it allows you to take note taking in an outline format. And that's basically it. So, what do you think about my setup? Is it pretty nice, clean, simple? Uh, do you want to see changes to it? So, leave a comment below. You can follow me, Kevin, and the other people at Tech House, plus Tech House itself, at the link below. So, this has been a Tech House video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.